for Inside Carolina, I'm Taylor Vipolis, and this is the Insider Rundown where I'll cover what I'm hearing when it comes to this UNC football team. When asked what the mood has been like since Carolina dropped its opener to Virginia Tech, one source in the program said candidly, we got served a big old slice of humble pie. I don't think there's an argument to be made when I say the team we saw in week one wasn't deserving of a top 10 ranking. However, while you're never as good as you think you are, you're also never as bad. That's where this UNC team currently finds itself after receiving that wake up call. The good news is that nobody has given up inside the building and no one is hanging their heads. Sam Howell said that losing week one can either ruin a season or turn it around, and Carolina is sure hoping that it's the latter for them. In the practices this week, the older players in particular have been more demanding of the younger players with that extra sense of urgency, knowing that a response is needed for this team to get its season back on track starting tomorrow. No offense to Georgia State, UNC's biggest opponent on Saturday is itself. The self-inflicted errors have to be cleaned up. Guards pulling the wrong way. A receiver not maintaining possession to the ground. Blown coverages defensively. Those are the things you'd like to see resolved before the Virginia game. Along those same lines, the coaching staff is looking for improvements from Sam Howell to trust the system in place because he has shown the tendency to start pressing at times. I can't really blame him. The offense showed next to no identity in Blacksburg, not being able to establish the run and not having receivers outside of Josh Downs creating separation. As a result, Howell puts a lot of pressure on himself to where it can feel like the outcome of a game unfairly falls directly on his shoulders. I love the fact that he is a gamer and in my mind, there still isn't a quarterback at this level you take instead of him leading your team. Following the loss at Virginia Tech, one NFL scout I talked to questioned Howell's decision making when it came to the run pass option plays in Phil Longo's offense. Every so often, he pulls on reads that should have been gives, then he can hold on to the ball for too long, failing to recognize that your offensive line is run blocking and getting to that next level, causing the illegal men downfield penalties. Nonetheless, if I had to bet on one player to bounce back in a big way, I'd put every dollar on someone like Sam Howell. We've seen a two-year sample size already. That's not where the worry would come from for this Carolina team. I also don't think the worry would come defensively for UNC. Last week, once that group settled down, it turned in a rather strong performance. When the players came back to the sidelines after the second possession, defensive coordinator Jay Bateman was trying to calm the guys down in that environment. Defensively, you'd much rather have to tell players to relax than to get up for the moment. Looking at who was out there, you have sophomores like Jaquarius Conley, Tony Grimes, Miles Murphy, Des Evans, or even a true freshman like Javari Ritzy who have never experienced something quite like that. Also remember that 40% of Eugene Asante's reps from all of last year came in the Orange Bowl. You can prepare all you want, there's nothing like game reps. I think they play with energy, they play with passion, and I think Bateman is going to put them in the right spot as their comfort level continues to grow. That's the rundown for this week. Stay tuned to Inside Carolina for more football coverage, including tomorrow, game day, from Carolina's home opener against Georgia State.